I built my very first workbench back around 2001, 2002. It really wasn't much more than a solid core door that I put a piano hinge on one side so I could secure it to my one car garage wall. And then I put two chains that came down from the ceiling to the other side. That way I could fold it up when I needed to get it out of the way. When I was going to do any chopping on it, I'd literally just put a 2x4 underneath wherever I was chopping for the temporary time I was doing that amount of work. It was the worst workbench you ever saw. My second workbench wasn't much better. I seem to remember it just being uh, some plywood atop some metal racks I bought at Home Depot. But I do seem to remember it actually having a real vice. My third workbench I built was actually in a corner of an efficiency apartment and I made it out of the maple underlying boards from when the school I was working in got flooded and they threw them all out into the dumpster. I picked them all up and built a workbench. My dad still has that workbench. And what you're looking at here is the fourth incarnation of my workbench. Probably the simplest one out there. It's basically a flat top with a leg vise. But along all those times, all those workbenches, there's one vice that has always gone with me. What you see me working on, the majority of all my videos, is this fourth version of my workbench. And it is, actually, I built 13 of them and just kept one. Uh, probably the best workbench I've had. I don't really ever need to get anything more, though I probably will build another one in the future. But it's got a leg vise on it. Perfectly signed. I can always put a leg vise on the, any of the other four corners. But there's some aspects that it doesn't do well. And for those aspects, I have to return to the vise I was using on my very first one. Back when I first started out, I had no clue what I was doing. Uh, I mean, look at that first bench. A solid core door chained to the wall? Come on. But that's actually where I cut my first dovetail. And I probably didn't cut another dovetail for four years. I was so disappointed in it. I did it with a hacksaw and a chisel I sharpened on the concrete. Because I didn't know any better at the time. But the clamp I used at that time, I still use today. You really can't beat the flexibility of these old twin screw cramps. You know, half the time you store them, they're all kind of wonky up. So just real quickly, reset them by twisting them until one they both come together. And then you can unlock it just by twisting it back and it gets a nice parallel clamp. And what I would do back then is I would clamp it to my workbench just like this. Now nowadays I can use my hold fast just because I have it available and they're really quite easy. Just drop a few down and have at it. I like to use two simply because it seems to lock it better. And I will put this front face right here in line with the front of my workbench. Go like there and all of a sudden I have a clamp that I can use for very large dovetails. If I'm like dovetailing a case I can put one of these on one side, one of these on the other side and cut all my dovetails. Really, really easy. If I'm doing something very long, it is super easy just to clamp the front up in my leg vise and let that rest right there or if I really want to secure it, I can clamp it down. And this will allow me to plane long stuff and keep everything really stable. Another trick I do a lot is I just drop some kind of peg in there. You can bump that up there and then allow it to sit in the jaws. Give you a little clamp and it'll hold your work upright so that you can plane easily. Now I mainly secure this with the hold fast nowadays, but I didn't start out that way. And it is always good to get one of these kind of quick clamps that has the removable head on it where you can take that off because it allows you to slide it up underneath there and then you can reattach the head and then clamp it right down and use it as normal. It's always nice to not have an apron underneath your table, so it just makes attaching stuff a lot easier. So if you're one of those people that always complain that you can't do something because you don't have the right clamps or anything like that, you have no excuse anymore. 
You can pick these things up at lots of garage sales and antique marts. They're practically worthless most of the time. Brand new, they're what, 20 bucks? And that's why I spend new when you buy so, such good ones used. It, these things are infinitely flexible for things other than just clamping stuff together. They are the ultimate go-to all-around vice. So for today's video, I'm going to shoot you to just a phenomenal archive of real skill. But before we do that one, if you like this video, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias. Visit my website, WorthEffort.com, where I do some uh, blog posts. I'll do a lot more of those in the coming uh, days. And I will also sell some of my own woodworker and a little bit of swag, such as t-shirts and hats and stuff. Kataro Tanaka... It, I think around 2009 through 2011, he was re-uploading some videos that he produced for, I want to say like a public television TV show in Japan. And he was archiving real crafts, some textile people, and really focused on woodworking. And I believe he himself is a woodworker, and the video I'm going to be shooting you to, I think, is his father. And it is just some incredible joinery that he does just sitting on the floor with a handful of tools he has around you. And specifically, if, you, if you're going to watch this video, go to the 17 minute mark. It's about a half hour video. It was a television show, I believe. But he assembles a double blind dovetail. And if you've questioned, where would anybody ever use this thing? Watch this joint go together. It is just unbelievable. And I love the fact that he doesn't test fit anything. Now, yes, it is in Japanese, but just think of it as a Jimmy Duresta style, just with hand tools for 30 minutes. You're going to love it. 